Welcome to Map Analysis for Hedgehogs. One and a half years ago, I made a video on Binary Ninja, Ida, Cutter, and Gaidra. However, when I did this video, I only had experience in using Ida on a daily basis, but not in any of the other disassemblers. So now I would uh, revisit this topic again because for the last one and a half years, I have used Binary Ninja and Gaidra more extensively. So if you're currently unsure which one to use, here are the pros and cons for each of them. Let's talk about one of the biggest deciding factors at first, and that is money. If you don't have any money at all, my recommendation is you use Gaidra or Kata or Radare. There are also free versions for Ida and for Binary Ninja. However, they are so limited that you will get soon into situations where you simply cannot deobfuscate the sample and you will have to use any of the other tools either way. So if you don't want to pay anything, use something like Gaidra. Um, I have no experience with Cutter except for the experience that I had when I created the last video. So I can't say much about that. Um, but Gaidra is fine and you don't need to feel bad about using it at all. It's, it doesn't improve your progress if you were able to spend more money on Ida, for instance. The biggest deciding factor with speed of analysis is not the tool, it's usually your experience. So what do you do when you have some money to spend? In these cases, you may consider one of the other tools. I will not tell you which prices they are now because they will probably change in the future. But when it comes to the price, Ida is by far the most expensive. You have, especially if you want to analyze a lot of different samples, you need to pay for every architecture that you want to analyze. So it's getting easily very, very expensive. And unless you're getting this paid from your company, you will probably not be able to afford it. But I mean, check it out. Check this uh, side out. Yeah. Um, Gaidra so far always had very affordable options, especially for students who got a discount in the past. Let's talk about scripting capabilities. Most people in the industry prefer Python 3. So you will find a lot of deobfuscation, decoding, whatever snippets in Python 3. And this is supported by IDA and also by Binary Ninja. Gaidra runs on the Java VM. So most of the code that you see for Gaidra is written in Java, but it also supports Jython. Jython is a Python implementation for the Java VM, and it's in an implementation of two point something. So it's not Python 3, and that's something you have to consider, especially with the binary, um, if you deal with code that um, transforms binary data, this might have some impact. So byte arrays and stuff have changed in Python 3. So let's talk about the API. And when it comes to usability of the API, Binary Ninja is by far the best. It's the most consistent, the most easiest to understand. Gaidra, well, it has a lot of example snippets and a lot of times things are easy to achieve um, if you, because you just have to modify them a little bit and then get what you want. However, the API is not exactly intuitive and easy to use if you want to write something entirely new, for instance. Um, Ida has changed their API a lot in the past, so they try to make it better, but it's still pretty inconsistent and uh, has some obscure names. You don't know what they mean. So, um, And because of those changes, you will also find example snippets that just don't work anymore. I mean, it's a good thing that they change it. It means they are working on making it better. But there are also drawbacks like old scripts not working anymore. When it comes to the graphical user interface and the usability, Binary Ninja is on the first place for me. They have a very intuitive graphical user interface. It is also easy to navigate. It's easy to find 
the features you're looking for. And um, yeah, it's really on the first place. So Gaidra on the second place for me because it's well structured, well organized. It's just not as beautiful. And certain things are harder to do. So for instance, adding types, you always have to fill in these tables and you cannot just add a um, source code, C source code to add a type. So this slows you a little bit down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but all in all, why not Ida? Well, Ida, because it's so old and has been developed so much and this it has grown in ways that are not as so ideal for a usability standpoint, but they are working on improving it. Still, if you want something more easy to use, probably not Ida. What about support for different compilers? For instance, Go, Delphi, Rust, all of these have very different ways to save their structures and these may even change with every version. Um, by far the best here again, is IDA. Now, what about the debugger? Again, IDA has the best debugger here. However, my favorite, my winner here is x64 dbg. Just use that. Now, one thing that really speeds up your analysis when reversing a file is that the disassembler decompiler detects types and function names automatically, especially when these are library functions that have been statically linked and you don't want to always figure out yourselves what these are. So the best support by far here has IDA. And yeah, that's all I can say about it. It's just IDA had the most time to work on that, I guess. Now, aside from function signature detection, how well are the decompilers? Well, in my opinion, they are all equally well. Some decompiler might work better on certain samples. So, but sometimes it's one, sometimes it's the other. It's, I, I cannot see a trend there. And so in my opinion doesn't really matter. However, binary ninjas decompiler is a little bit different than the others. They do have a pseudo C representation, just like Gaidra has and Ida has. However, especially if you want to work with the scripts and stuff, you will have to kind of get used to the IL code that they use. So this old um, binary ninja IL code and not everyone likes it. Just, I, I guess you can just try it with the free version and see if you might get friends with it. Some people may consider working together on analyzing one sample or samples that are part of one project. If that's the case, Gaidra is by far the best. Um, Ida has added this capability recently, but from what I heard, it's still having some issues. It's not working as well as in Gaidra. This may change in the future though. I mean, look at the date and uh, look at the releases that have happened in between. Maybe this isn't the case anymore when you watch this video. In the last video, I was a little bit annoyed that for Gaidra, I had to first load a file into a project, create a project, load a file into the project, and then open it for analysis. So there are so many steps to opening a file. This might be relevant for you if you are working in a job where you have to analyze a lot of samples on a daily basis. This can happen in certain types of jobs. But for most reverse engineers, it shouldn't be anything that reduces your efficiency because in most cases you will have a sample or a set of samples that you work on for several days or even weeks. So this shouldn't be an issue. Um, also, I really like this project structure by now because you can put many samples that belong together into one project folder and I actually like it. It's neat. Now talking about support, I don't have much experience with support when it comes to Ida or uh, Gaidra, but is there even support for Gaidra? Probably not because it's for free. Anyhow, um, Binary Ninja is excellent. So you have the Slack channel, you just post a question in there and you get your answer. And it's very, um, very easy to get some help there from the people who created this. 
So what uh, deep compiler disassembler do you prefer? Let me know. I hope this video helps you to make your choice. And if it doesn't, don't worry too much about it. Just roll the dice. It's not set in stone that you have to use this tool for the next 10, 20 years. Um, I personally use all three and have no troubles with that. So changing, switching, it's not an issue. It's, it's a little bit of work, but not, not that much that you need to um, take weeks to decide about that. In those weeks, you could have learned to work with the tool. If you want to learn Mev analysis from the ground up, then check the link in the description below. There's a link to my Udemy course for beginners. It contains 11 hours of video content and uh, the link is a coupon link that's a little bit cheaper for you than um, buying it from Udemy itself. So check it out and maybe I see you there.